we've seen the triumph of the therapeutic within churches, within Christian communities. We've seen what I've once called the esteemification of American Christianity, the fact that God wants us to be happy or the idea that God wants us to be happy as opposed to being set apart or holy. Can you expand on the problem of the church and how the church is contributing to the collapse of Western civilization? Right. We are supposed to be salt and light, and the salt has definitely lost its savor, and the light has been dimmed. And this is because we've not been faithful to our baptism. You talk about the triumph of the therapeutic. That is the title of a great book that came out in 1966, written by a secular Jew. He was a social critic named Philip Reef, R-I-E-F-F. And uh, Reef, though he was not a believer, he said that the world that we're in now is collapsing precisely because there is we don't recognize any higher authority as happened under you know, when we lived by the Bible. You know, we believed in the Ten Commandments. We believed that there was something beyond ourselves that we all had to submit to, even if we didn't necessarily believe in God personally. And what has happened, said Reap, in the 20th century after Freud, we all came to believe that we can never ultimately know God, that God doesn't exist, but we can learn how to moderate our own anxieties and to deal with our own unhappiness. So after Freud, the idea of, a, uh, of holiness was done for. There was no such thing anymore. Rather, we sought well-being. We sought feeling good about ourselves. And this, said Philip Reef in 1966, he said, the churches don't realize it, but they've already been conquered by this false gospel. And uh, it's astonishing to read this book, Hank, this book from 1966, and to see how much this man, who wasn't even a religious believer, understood about the corruption overtaking the churches. Fast forward to 2017, just before my book, The Benedict Option, came out, I was speaking at a conservative evangelical college here in the U.S., and I, I was giving a talk about the importance of spiritual disciplines in daily life. In the Q&A part, a young woman stood up, raised her hand, and said, Sir, I don't understand what you mean about spiritual discipline. Why isn't it enough for us to love Jesus with all our hearts as our parents taught us? And I said to her, well, that's where we start. We have to love Jesus with all our hearts, but we can't hold on to that emotion forever, that we have to show that we love him by obeying his commandments. And we can only really do that if we live in disciplined ways. You can imagine what I said to her, but I could see in her eyes she had no idea what I was talking about. After that exchange was over, a professor came up to me and said, what that young lady said to you is how 99% of the students on this campus feel. That's how they think about the Christian life. So when they, they've come up through youth group culture that has taught them that Knowing Christ is entirely relational. Jesus is my best friend. There's nothing in there about discipleship, about asceticism, about repentance, none of that. And so when they get off of this college campus, which is kind of a bubble for them, straight out of youth group to an evangelical college campus, they get out into the real world. The first time somebody comes up to them and says, what Christianity teaches is mean, they collapse because the one thing they've learned from their youth group and their time here at the college is that Jesus doesn't want us to be mean. So this, I'm sorry for that long digression, but this sort of thing, I've heard it play out in Catholic circles, even among some Orthodox. This is what it means to be a Christian in 21st century America. But insofar as that's what it means to be Christian, it means that our children and our grandchildren will no longer have the faith the gossamer thread will have been cut, not by our hostility to Christianity, but by our watering it down, by showing contempt for the tradition we've actually been given, by watering it down with compassion. Compassion is a form of contempt. You've been listening to Episode 115, Totalitarianism in America, with Rod Dreher, on the Hank Unplugged podcast. To listen to the full episode, please click the link in the description below.